this is going to be a very powerful storm. It's absolutely kind of blows my mind. I'm not going to lie. I mean, this thing is going to move all the way up the East Coast uh, with 70 mile per hour winds. We have strong tornado risk all the way throughout the Gulf of Mexico up into the East Coast as well. We've got blizzard conditions down near Oklahoma all the way up into the Great Lakes expected. I mean, this is going to be, uh, you know, for lack of better words, one of the strongest storms that we will probably have this year. It's literally got everything that you could expect from a dangerous storm so we're going to break that down in this forecast for you guys in a simple and easy to understand way all right first down we're going to be breaking down the new risks here we got the day one categorical risk with an enhanced risk down here for southern alabama going into florida southern mississippi and southeastern louisiana around the toe area of the louisiana foot and i mean we're talking about uh, some very dangerous conditions in this area also we've got a slight risk around that from houston college station Gal Galveston, Beaumont, South of Meridian, going into Dothan and Apalachicola, then a marginal risk around that that extends all the way from Dallas into Florida, down into Victoria and Austin and Brownwood, Texas. Not only that, uh, we've got a tornado risk with this storm, a 10% hatched risk for strong tornadoes. Again, you know, these are the type of tornadoes that could cause major damage to homes if they do happen on this day. So you're going to definitely want to be weather aware if you live over here near Baton Rouge, Gulfport, New New Orleans, Hattiesburg, Mobile, uh, over there just to uh, Panama City there, and then a 5% around that. Those are going to be briefer and weaker tornadoes with the conditional risk, I still believe, uh, over here near Beaumont, Galveston, and Houston, potentially for a strong tornado. But it's very conditional, and confidence isn't really high enough right now in order to say definite things about that right now so that's why we don't have a 10 percent hashed risk there around that we have a two percent you know going from uh, Apalachicola all the way into Dothan to College Station there uh, going over to the wind risk we have a uh, 30 percent chance here for damaging winds of over 70 miles per hour over here for Baton Rouge New Orleans Gulfport Mobile and Panama City also in Apalachicola Dothan South of Meridian Beaumont and Houston and Galveston we have a 15 percent for 60 mile per hour winds and above over there near Montgomery, Tuscaloosa, Jackson, Greenville, through Dallas and Austin. We have a 5% there. And we have a 15% risk for hail over there near Gulfport, New Orleans, uh, Beaumont, Houston, Galveston, College Station, then a 5% around that for Mobile, Meridian, Jackson, Monroe, Shreveport, Tyler, going on to Victoria. Now, moving on to the day two risk. I mean, as you can see, I mean, a lot has changed here. We've had this enhanced risk extend all the way from Tallahassee up the East Coast, and a lot of this risk is towards tornado driven we do have a 10 percent hash risk down here for those strong damaging tornadoes again this is a dangerous day for tornadoes um and this is going to be here on the 9th going towards albany tallahassee apalachicola panama city dothan Watch out for that. Also, Charleston, Columbia, Florence, North Myrtle Beach, Fayetteville, Wilmington, Jacksonville, Greenville. You guys are all in that 10% hash risk. Strong tornadoes will be possible. You need to be weather aware in the ninth. And also, you're going to have those really strong winds work their way up the coast with this storm as well. Got a 5% around that extending from Southern Virginia all the way down into Jacksonville, Brunswick. And then we have a 2% around that from South Virginia going all the way down into Orlando, Tampa, Cape Coral, Port St. Lucie. Miami. I mean, the entire state of Florida is almost in a, a tornado risk here. This is a very large risk, and this is going to be probably one of the more dangerous days with this storm. So, guys, please, uh, you know, whether you live over here, uh, you know, near the Baton Rouge, Houston area, Mobile, or over here on the East Coast, definitely be paying attention to the storm and be weather aware. We will be live for both of these days, giving you all the up to date information as it's happening. All right, starting off with timing here with the day one or you know going into tomorrow starting at bright and early 6 a.m uh, literally an hour from when this forecast will be released here we're going to have a line of storms that is going to bring a damaging wind threat into the dallas region mckinney uh, as well by 10 a.m and then we're going to have some of these prefrontal storms fire in this region that is when we're going to first start monitoring these storms for maybe a tornado potential to start off there but that really won't get started until we get over here to baton rouge and new orleans but over here near houston and beaumont we got to watch this starting at 11 a.m and you 
you can see we have a, a couple here of more discrete cells. You know, this environment is prime for strong tornadoes. The forcing with this is not going to be too strong in terms of the lapse rates, but it's definitely going to be enough to cause some uh, potential strong tornadoes, but uh, enough for tornadoes in general. Mostly the briefer and weaker ones are what we're expecting right now. But again, things can change as we come close. Definitely got to watch this area as the environment is there at 2 p.m. here for Houston going up into Shreveport, pushing this through a little bit further. Uh, you can see that line moves through Shreveport, a bunch of individualized cell that could bring a severe potential all the way throughout the entire state here of Louisiana. It may be some damaging winds here for southern Arkansas as well. But yeah, any one of these storms could try to become tornadic as it moves into uh, Louisiana here by the time we get into 9 p.m. So really from 7 p.m. to 9 p.m. is when this really starts to get started here. You can see we got a big line of storms here. We're going to have a QLCS threat start to form. And then look at this. Unfortunately, the HRRR is painting more of those more discrete cells, which can have a bigger risk for some stronger tornadoes here and that's going to be entering into mobile golf port by around 1 a.m on the night so we're talking about an overnight event where it's going to be very dangerous you won't be able to see the tornadoes you'll be tempted to go to sleep if you don't have a weather radio i would not advise you to go to sleep i would advise you to stay up for this entire thing just in case you do get put under one of those very serious tornado warnings tomorrow um, but pushing this forward uh, into 2 or 3 p.m that line moves into southern alabama mobile down into near destin just to the south of montgomery there we're still Tornadoes will be possible. Damaging winds happening over there near Tuscaloosa. And then pushing this into 7 a.m. We still have this line of storms pushing now into Dothan, Panama City, Apalachicola as well. All right, now moving into the next day, starting at 6 a.m., we still got that line of storms now moving through Mobile, uh, pushing into Dothan, Panama City, Apalachicola by 10 or 11 a.m. And then we got that line moving through Albany and Macon at 1 p.m. This is still right in that period. You know, there's that enhanced risk. That's still that entire thing that I just said. Still have a chance for strong tornadoes there. And then as this moves off to the east towards Augusta, Savannah, it's going to be a strong line of storms with mainly a risk for some damaging winds there. But also, you know, you could potentially have some strong, stronger tornadoes in that line embedded tornadoes qlcs most likely weaker briefer tornadoes but some of them could be strong especially up here near south carolina where we start to see some prefrontal storms start to fire as those move into south carolina north carolina and fayetteville florence around the jacksonville wilmington southport region uh, by around 5 p.m and then looking down at the south you can see this line extends all the way down into tampa by 5 p.m and then pushing this uh even further into 7 p.m uh we still have some of these prefrontal storms up here more making their way into North Carolina near Greenville, Jacksonville, Wilmington, Southport still, and, you know, still going to be a strong tornado threat with that elevated damaging wind threat of over 70 mile per hour winds going to be possible with this thing as it moves off to the east and then 9 p.m. moves through this past Greenville is approaching Virginia Beach, Kitty Hawk down here to the south. The severe weather threat is going to be really dying off here. Um, and as our focus shifts up to the north, uh, you can see that those damaging winds and potential four strong tornadoes are going to exist and exit the country by around 1 a.m. Shifting our focus back here, we have some snow that's going to be coming into the picture here as well with this storm. Uh, could have some pretty major impacts. You know, we can have potentially up to 70 mile per hour winds as this thing gets started over here near Colorado and Kansas, causing some blizzard conditions. We have blizzard warnings already in place out here and winter storm warnings further off to the north. And that could start at around 5 a.m. when that heavier snow starts to fall. And then by 2 p.m., we have a snow band extending all the way from Minnesota down into Kansas into Oklahoma. Oklahoma and Texas there. Heavier snow starting to pick up there near Kansas City, Omaha, and Lincoln. And then pushing this into 5 p.m. here, uh, you can see that that heavy snow moves now into Missouri, uh, northern Missouri, down there in southern Iowa, starting to nose into Illinois with that heavy snow still falling on the backside here for Nebraska, going into Kansas and Oklahoma, maybe nosing into Amarillo, Texas there, and then pushing this uh, to 10 p.m. here. That heavy snow moves into Illinois, starting to drop that near Bloomington, Springfield, Chicago over there, and then over here in Iowa near Des Moines, starting to see that heavier snow still existing here near Kansas City, Lincoln, and Sioux City, and then pushing this all the way uh, into the ninth here at 9 a.m. Uh, we start to see uh, this uh, heavy snow start to move into Wisconsin. Still some snow on the backside falling here for Minnesota, Iowa, and Missouri, maybe even getting all the way 
far south to Little Rock could see some flakes. Probably won't see much accumulation, though, out of that. Now, move your attention over here to Pennsylvania. Starting to see some heavy snow start to pick up over here. Very, very heavy snow. Wet snow is going to be falling there uh, in Pennsylvania. And then pushing this through, uh, that snow moves up to the north into New York. And that rain follows. And those gustier winds are going to be falling on the backside. While we still have some very snowy conditions up here near Wisconsin and Michigan there. And still some light snow on the backside uh, happening in those same regions in Iowa, Missouri, and Illinois. Um, and yeah, I mean, it, this is definitely uh, going to be dropping a decent amount of snow. And blizzard conditions could still be possible up here. So watch out for those high winds with the snow. And then, then that's going to be at 3 p.m. here on the 9th, pushing this forward even more into 12 a.m. This thing is still going. I mean, look at this. Potentially snow all the way down here in Alabama and northern Georgia. Snowflakes are going to be possible in Tennessee. Uh, maybe some accumulation there in Tennessee going up into Kentucky. Um, heavier snow moving into Ohio there as well. And that picks up south of Cleveland going into Pittsburgh, Charleston. So a wide area of snow on the backside as we go into Wednesday morning. And we still have these winds on the east coast causing major problems, probably power outages at this point as that snow starts to exit there in Maine and then pushing this into 9 a.m. Still have some snow on the backside going through Pennsylvania, New York, and into West Virginia. Not super heavy snow, but enough snow to see some flakes, and then that starts to die down there. Looking at our estimated snowfall totals across the country, you can see we have a big band here of 11 to 12 inches in Colorado up in the higher elevations. Then going into Kansas, potentially could have an isolated spot here of around 12 inches of snow. That's going to be near, there near Goodland and Colby with 11 inches around that, potentially making it up into McCook, Nebraska, coming up into western Nebraska or eastern Nebraska, Kearney, Grand Island, Lincoln, Sioux City could get up in those eight nine maybe 10 inches of snow near snoof near Sioux Falls could potentially get in those 10 inches of snow there. Southern uh, Iowa going into northern Missouri could get in those 8 to 9, 10 inches near Des Moines, Ames, and then uh, start to get into Iowa City, Davenport. This could be our hot spot here for snow uh, with up to a foot of snow being possible there. Near Cedar Rapids, 11 inches. Dubuque, 11 inches. Galesburg, Peoria, 8 to 9 inches. Rockford, 11 inches. Madison, 11 inches. Milwaukee, Sheboygan, 11 inches. And then around there, on the outer edges here, uh, give or take, you know, a couple, like about 100 miles here is going to be four uh, to five inches in this little blue area. So if you live on the outskirts of any of these areas, can expect uh, up to a dusting to four to five inches. And going into Michigan, northern Michigan over there, just to the east of Traverse City for Big Rapids, Cadillac, and going into Gaylor and Osiogo, uh, Osiogo Lake and Hillman uh, could potentially get up into those eight inch marks there. Then further snow is going to fall. Uh, uh, over here into West Virginia, going into Pennsylvania. I do want to note that uh, some of the snow that was showing up there in Ohio is on the 11th, and this is only goes out to the 10th. So I do think more snow will be possible for Ohio, but we'll cover that in future forecasts. But yeah, along the Appalachians here, still four to five inches to fall, going into northern Pennsylvania, up into New York, maybe potentially five to eight inches there. Along the mountains here in Vermont and pretty much everywhere else in Vermont, talking about four to five inches with some isolated spots getting up into those eight inch marks on the peak of mountains there going into the upper elevations here in new hampshire and into maine potentially up to a foot and the lower you go down in elevation we're talking about four to five inches there all right next on our list of crazy uh crazy impacts here i mean this one is just it, it, i mean it's for lack of a better word it's just going to be a doozy for a lot of people out here i mean it's going to be wild uh, to, to be quite honestly honestly this is i would say this is one of the more mind-blowing things because this just doesn't happen that often uh but yeah, starting over here uh, by 12 p.m., we're going to be having you know, widespread 40 to 50 mile per hour wind gusts happening over here uh, for Missouri, going into Arkansas, down into eastern Texas there. It starts to move into Louisiana and Mississippi with widespread 40 to 30 mile per hour winds already making it in to Nashville, Alabama, going into Mississippi by around 5 p.m. with 40 to 50 mile per hour winds uh, near the coast there. Then right here, going at 11 p.m., could potentially have up to 60 to 65 maxing out this model on this app here at 68.9 uh, miles per hour so maybe even getting stronger than that that's those strong gradient winds uh, on this storm as it moves off to the east and then those winds are going to continue all the way across the country here uh, you know a 60 50 60 almost 70 miles per hour up here in the Appalachian Mountains and out in front I mean we're still got 40 uh, 45 50 mile per hour winds before that line of storms uh, even comes and then and then you know 
even after all of that, after this tra traverses the United States, the winds continue across the coast, starting down here uh, near South Carolina with 60 to 65 mile per hour winds over here near Virginia Beach, 60 to 62 mile per hour winds as we get into the 3 p.m. time frame on uh, January 9th here, and then pushing this through. Look at this. Uh, by 6 p.m. on the 9th, look at this. Yeah, 68 uh, winds off the coast there, then up to 50 to 60 mile per hour winds all the way from, you know, South Carolina up the coast into Maryland, Delaware, up into New Jersey. Still all those 60 mile per hour winds by 6 p.m., pushing this even further by 9 p.m. We're going to have that huge swath here of potentially 60 to 70 mile per hour wind gusts. It's going to be possible here on the 9th, uh, extending from Jacksonville up into Greenville, Virginia Beach. For, uh, for, sorry, for, I was about to say freaking, but yeah, over there near Salisbury, it's just it's a, it's incredibly impressive uh, the amount of damaging winds that's going to be available with the storm over here near Georgetown, off the coast here of New Jersey, uh, over here near Long Island, sixty to seventy mile per hour winds, and then um, you know coming into uh, the next time frame here at three a.m. at well, on the tenth now, uh, we're still talking to 60, 70 mile per hour winds there for Long Island, uh, over here near the Cape of Massachusetts. Uh, uh, over there near Duntucket, 60 to 70 mile per hour winds over here near the coast of uh, of Maine as well. And those winds spread inland to Maine where we're going to have widespread 50 to 60 mile per hour winds along the coast. And in like, you know, it's not just the coast that's going to be getting impacts. You know, as those winds start to pick up, we could still have 50 to 60 mile per hour winds uh, from South Carolina going up into North Carolina all the way up into New York could potentially see up to those 60 to 70 mile per hour wind gusts. So a large area and a very large area of pretty intense winds, some almost getting up to hurricane force winds for multiple hours as this storm comes through. It's going to be a very, very windy day. I'm expecting widespread power outages in the millions with this storm, and it's going to be very impactful. So make sure that you are weather aware if you are in the path of any of these storms. That's all the risks uh, for the storm except for one more. I know what you're thinking, Evan. I mean, uh, Blizzard risks, strong tornado risks, huge wind gusts up the entire East Coast. Can it get any worse? Yes, it can. We also have flood risks out there that are almost maxed out here. We've got a moderate risk down here near New Orleans, Baton Rouge, Gulfport for some flooding and then over so that's a three out of four on the uh, on the bad flood scale and uh, we got a slight risk around that extending into alabama mississippi and louisiana going over to day three we've got another moderate risk over here near philadelphia trenton spartan township allentown reading there for pennsylvania and new jersey then a huge slight risk extending all the way from massachusetts all the way down into georgia so so many threats to watch out for Definitely, everybody in this entire region needs to be weather aware. This is going to be a wild couple of days, so make sure you tune into this channel. I will be live for all of this uh, online channel. Could potentially end up even doing a 24-hour stream to cover all of this effectively. But, uh, but yeah, hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button to get notified when I go live tomorrow and the next day. And, man, I'll see you there. Fingers crossed. Uh, that we, we, we have as, as minimal impacts as possible given the scenario that we're dealing with here.